Hello, Michigan gardeners. This is Doug at Bosford Family Farm. We're on Verona Road, just outside of Marshall, Michigan. It's a beautiful day, Friday, November 5th, and we're going to have a really nice weekend, Saturday and Sunday. This is a great time to get out in the garden and do some of those fall cleanup chores that need to be done. This is debatable what I've got here. I've cut down several grasses. I prefer to cut the grasses down in the fall. Um, I've found that rodents, uh, voles, moles, um, chipmunks find shelter underneath that grass uh, and the predators, the hawks and, and the other birds that like to get those uh, animals out of my garden have a hard time finding them with all that grass up. The grass also tends to fall over. It, it does have winter interest when the snow falls on the plumes. But to me, um, it tends to fall over and it makes it much harder to cut down in the spring. But it's, it's really up to you. You can do it in the spring, no harm or foul. You can do it in the fall, no damage to the plant. It's just kind of a preference on when you want to do it. And for me, again, there's the added benefit of, of, of some of those uh, rodents not having any as much protective cover. Um, other things I've cut down, I'll go through the garden and just kind of talk to you about it. Um, I did cut back my cat mint here um, a, probably a couple weeks ago because um, again it gets pretty sprawly in the winter but again you can do it in the spring. Peonies, cut them right down to the ground. You can just see the stubs here. I talked about this a little bit when I did the um, dividing and replanting of the peony. Um, you really want to get these guys out of here, the, the old foliage out of here because what happens is if you leave it there um, and the new growth starts to emerge, you could have some botrytis, which is kind of a mold uh, that could form on your uh, peony blossoms next year. So get that stuff out of there. This is a great time to add some manure if you have it around the top of the peonies. Again, fall is a great time for that. I tend to have more time for that in the spring, so I do that in the spring a lot of times. It's also a great time to pull weeds out, get the get it cleaned up um, so it's ready to come through the ground. The, those peonies will be one of the first things through the ground in the spring. Um, another planting of cat mint here. Some grasses back there that I'm going to take down. This tall plant here, this is butterfly bush, and I do not cut that down until the spring. We are zone five and butterfly bushes are good for zone five. We are just their top hardiness zone. You go much further north and they're not gonna be hardy. I grew up in Maine. Uh, butterfly bushes were not hardy in zone four. Um, so I leave those on because what happens is if you cut them off right to the ground, and again, you may have a different experience with this. You may find that your butterfly bushes get cut back in the fall and they do just fine. But what I've had happen before is the buds are sometimes on the lower part of those branches and it will winter, it will freeze into the branches if I cut them off too short. So I just leave it up all winter long and then in the spring, um, usually mid-April or so, it's one of the last ones that I, I get out of there. I, I cut them down to about, you know, maybe four or five inches tall uh, and I can usually see some new growth coming at that point. This other tall one over here is Baptisia. Um, I could do it now. It's not a problem to do it now, but in the spring you'll find you can just go right up and, and just pull on the stuff and it just breaks right off and, and it's really dry and brittle, easy to get rid of in the spring. So I do leave the Baptisia until the spring. Again, some people might prefer to get it cleaned up in the fall. The Oriental poppies are all up. You want to leave those alone. They're, they come up when it gets cool again, and they'll indicate where they're going to be. All that foxglove that's right in there. I will actually put some uh, straw mulch on top of those foxglove. I found in winters when we don't have enough rain, or enough snow rather, sorry, um, what happens is... Uh, We'll get some rain it'll, and it will freeze into the crown of that plant and sometimes, actually oftentimes, kill the foxglove. So I put some straw on. You can use leaves if you want to, but I would get something on your foxgloves. Again, if we have a, a good snowy winter um, and they have snow coverage most of the winter, that will provide the insulation naturally. 
but we don't always get the snow, so I like to cover those up. Um, I did do some planting of some bulbs the other day. I can already see the dogs have been in, out here digging a little bit. They're probably looking for some of those rodents I talked about earlier. Um, there's an aster out here next to the road that I talked about in one of my latter videos. It's still going. This one's Radon's favorite. It's very, very pretty. But in this part of the garden, I like to get it out of here. I can still see occasionally a bee working on it, so I'll probably delay taking this out for a few more days because the bees are still working on it, trying to get the last of their nectar and honey built up for the winter. Um, and it's still a very pretty plant right now, um, but I, it does go to seed, and I really don't want it seeding all through the garden. It can be really problematic if it does. And that's the case with this other grass over here, I don't have um, bad luck with the maiden grasses. Um, that one there is Huron Sunrise, and this one is Adagio. I don't have bad luck with them seeding, so you could leave those up in the winter. But the switch grasses, if you have switch grasses, and this one in back here, that's Shenandoah. And then this one over here, this one is heavy metal. They tend to seed around a bit, so I do like to get those cut down in the fall. And you might want to think about that too. If you've got them in a mixed planting where um, they might seed and become a bit invasive, if you've got them in a place where you can kind of control that, they're just grasses planted there, no other perennials, you're probably okay. Um, but the other thing you have to look at is, is plants that seed. Um, you know, I've got a drift of cone flowers up here. And, you know, a lot of the books talk about, you know, don't you like those flower heads and you want to leave those up for the birds in the winter. It's all well and good, but if you're finding you're just getting too many cone flowers that they're seeding around too much, now is a good time. Probably should have been done even sooner if you've got a lot of cone flowers. A good time to um, cut down the cone flowers unless you want the seeds or unless you want to f provide some habitat um, for birds in the winter. Um, so that's a few things. Hostas, daylilies, I don't do anything with um, until the spring. They're very, very easy care. This is candy tuft here. It's an, again another evergreen. You cut that back early spring um, after it's done flowering. Um, it usually flowers latter part of May. Uh, beginning of June and then you just cut it back and it makes a nice green hedge and then you don't cut it back again until it flowers the next year. So that's one you don't have to worry about. Um, flocks, lots of garden flocks here. Um, I cut that back as soon as it's done blooming. I talked about that in an earlier video and it's it's perfectly fine like it is right now. Um, it'll die back in the winter and the new growth will have plenty of room to come through there. Um, but that's a few of the perennials. You have to kind of think about the cedars. Um, fountain grasses tend to seed some. So I, this fountain grass here, redhead, I cut all the plumes off when they were starting to shatter and go to seed. And now I'll come through today and just cut back all that foliage right to the ground and get it out of the garden. Um, so it's all cleaned up for in the spring. It also depends on how much you want to do in the spring. If you like to work more in the spring, that's fine. But this weekend being so beautiful, um, talking about 60 degrees on Sunday, November 7th, um, 2021, I, it's a great time to get out in the garden and do some of those cleanup chores. Um, last video I'll probably do is on the strawberries. Um, I'll And I'll take you over to the bees at that time too. But we don't mulch the strawberries. For another few weeks, you really want to have three or four nights in the 20s where the ground really starts to freeze and you can start to really um, see that it's getting really cold. Sometimes that's Thanksgiving, sometimes it's first week in December, sometimes it's a little later in December, but that's when we put the straw mulch on the strawberries and quote unquote put them to bed for the winter. Again, if you're going to get lots of snow and over near Lake Michigan they do get more snow, you can just... Um, rely on the snow to provide that insulation, but 
where we are just far enough east of the Lake Michigan, we don't always get that much snow and you want to have some extra protection on there. That's what the straw will do for you, for your strawberries to get through the winter. All right, I'll talk to you next time um, when I do the video on the strawberries and uh, give you a little bee update. But that'll be probably at least two weeks from now. Take care.